Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire, and this week I'm really excited to announce that I have 16 brand new stencil designs with Joggles.com. These are in addition to my original 15 designs that sold so well that they asked me to create more. So I am going to feature two of those designs this week on Tutorial Tidbits and I'm going to invite you to join me to make some Mother's Day cards on the gel plate. Now, your mother would love to receive a card from you in addition to just Mother's Day, and so we're going to make several at a time. Also, I'm sure that these days with many people spending so much time at home, you've probably got family members that would also love to receive a handwritten, hand-painted note from you in their mailbox. So, if you've got a few minutes, let's go out to the garage studio and check it out. So, I'm going to make four at a time, which is kind of nice. And they're gonna be Mother's Day cards initially because I've got a few wonderful women in my life that would be great for Mother's Day cards. Plus uh, my mom enjoys cards all year long. So I'll make them for Mother's Day and then I'll make a stack of them. So I'll have them to give uh, throughout the uh, next several months, which is a nice thing to have in your mailbox when you're spending a lot of time at home. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to roll out um, some teal but I've got a dirty brayer here so here's how you clean a brayer you roll it off onto a dry piece of paper until it doesn't roll off any color anymore and I want to start with a nice clean teal and that's golden fluid acrylic teal so that'll be my first layer I'm not going to coat the whole panel I'm going to leave some white space so we have some nice negative space and some space to work with for a rubber stamp. So I'm gonna put them on here so that they all get a section. Um, it, there's no real rhyme or reason to this. We're just gonna give each card a section of teal, a quadrant of teal. And they can be in any different configuration that you want. Then I'm gonna take that clean sheet of paper and use it to press down apply pressure and get my solid teal quadrants on all four of my panel cards. And I'm gonna make sure that I press right out to the corners. Now when I pull these up, they're pretty much dry already, which is nice because we can go on to our next layer right away. I'm gonna squeeze it a little bit to flatten it out. They curl when they peel. And this rough edge is really nice. And that's caused just by a buildup of paint on the edges of my plate. I really like that rough edge, very organic. So my next color is going to be permanent violet dark. So I wanna make sure that I get all of the green off of this brayer by rolling it out again on a clean sheet of paper. So I've got golden fluid acrylic permanent violet dark. Swirl that around to blend in any residual teal. I'm gonna put my stencil design of fun tropical flowers right over the plate. And I'm gonna bring these cards in and I'm going to cover the teal and it's okay if it goes into the white, but I definitely want these purples to print on the teal. But before I do that, I'm gonna remove the space in between because this is a mask. So I'm gonna take a clean sheet of paper and remove the negative spaces. Make sure all the space, all the paint is out of these negative spaces down in between the mask. Then I'm gonna lift up the mask. Now I'm gonna print that image on my teal. So I'm very quickly, because it's hot here, gonna work and line up with my teal. And it's okay if it goes over the edge a little bit. Then I'm gonna grab my clean sheet and apply pressure, making sure I go right out to the corners to transfer the positive image from that mask. So the idea here is to, we don't worry about it being perfectly lined up, but we want the purple 
permanent violet dark tropical flowers to be on top of the teal. This one came over the edge a little bit and it looks really neat. So we're making four cards at once here and four different cards. So again, we're gonna take a dry, clean piece of paper and roll the brayer out to remove the paint off the brayer. And then the next color is going to be, I'm gonna flip this over to make sure that I don't pick up any of that permanent violet. And I'm gonna use green gold, golden fluid acrylic. Now I'm gonna spread that green gold out and it's gonna be nice and pure because I flipped the plate over so that it wouldn't pick up any of that purple. And I've got this very cool mid-century modern sort of square design of stencils. That's another mask actually. Uh, but this time I'm not gonna press the paint below and remove it. This time I'm gonna use it the way that it is. So I'm gonna go uh, for leaving the negative spaces, which will be white. So the square pattern will be white. I also wanna leave myself some white, white area. So when I lay these on, I wanna be mindful that some of it just runs off the page so that I have some pure white area. That can be tricky and it can require some practice. Let's do that this way. For this one sort of like that. And it leaves you with some empty space. So you'll take this print, which will be good for collage later, and use it to press and to pick up the paint that's in the space that has no card on it. And remember to press out at the corners, apply pressure down through your stencil mask. And lift that off. And now we're gonna have some of that fun green square and we want to make sure that we leave some white space. So we've got a little bit of green square. My green still got a little bit of purple in it because the brayer wasn't completely clean. So there we go. And we've got a ghost print trapped under here that I'm just gonna transfer onto this clean sheet to use for collage paper later. So I'm cleaning my plate with this clean sheet. And then in the last step, I'm taking a stamp that I designed for rubbermoon.com. And it's a similar tropical flower as the mask for joggles. So I'm going to use turquoise thalo, which is nice and dark. I'm gonna spread that out onto the plate. And then on each one of these four cards, I'm going to stamp one of those flowers in the white space. It's okay if it overlays into the color, but it's gonna be partially in the white space. So I'm gonna stamp it on the gel plate and then onto the white space. And there you have a nice card. If you have a lot of white space, you could make two flower stamps. You could make one of them going off the edge. Here's another one. Nice composition. Here's another one. Nice composition. I might do a second stamp down in this corner just to show you that. So on that one, I've got two. And last but not least, we've got this one. I'm gonna let my stamp sort of run off the edge and run up into the teal area. Not enough ink on that one, really. Not very dark. Uh, let's put some more. I'm drying really quickly in here because it's hot and it's a dry climate. So. Let's get that wet again, move faster, and we don't have to worry about lining it up. And there I've got another stamp. 
So the idea is to leave a decent amount of white space for the stamping and to leave this area with negative space from the stencil so it doesn't get too much paint coverage and to play with your compositions so you have some nice card panel. And a clean brayer would have made that green gold nice and bright, but I don't mind it with a little purple in it. Here's some examples of another one that I did where my green gold got a little teal in it and my stamp is in the white area. There's another one. So you just have to play with it, but you need to make sure that you leave yourself a white quadrant and I will give you the names of the stencils, uh, links to them, as well as the stamp down below. And my desktop here is the Ranger nonstick craft mat. And this just wipes up all the paint wipes off of this. Nothing sticks to it. So it's a beautiful clean surface. Every time I come back out here to do a video, I can clean the acrylic off of it. I can clean varnish off of it. So there you go. Thank you for being here and happy Friday.